Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well today. In this video, let's talk about volume. Basically, volume is just the amount of 3D space that's inside of an object. To understand what 3D means, let's talk about what 1D and 2D means first. Think about the concept of perimeter. Perimeter is one-dimensional, or 1D. If we have a line segment that looks like this, and it's made up of four of these one-unit lengths, then this length is going to be four units. And if you were to measure a bunch of these straight lines around a 2D shape, that would be perimeter. While perimeter is a 1D or one-dimensional measurement, area is a 2D or two-dimensional measurement. Check out this rectangle here. Try to remember that the concept of area is just how many little squares are inside of a 2D shape. Notice how this rectangle is really made up of four of these squares. We can say that the area of this rectangle is four squared units or four units squared because it's made up of four squares that are each one unit by one unit. Given that the area of each of these squares is one unit squared, the total area of the rectangle is four units squared. Now let's add in a third dimension and talk about volume. Check out this rectangle here, which is identical to the one above it, but we're going to add a third dimension giving it some depth. This would be considered a rectangular prism and we can split it into cubes instead of squares. Splitting this rectangular prism into four identical cubes that have a length of one unit, a width of one unit, and a height of one unit, we have four cubic units or four cubes that make up this rectangular prism. Some key takeaways that you want to have are just that perimeter is just the measurement of unit lengths or how many little lines there are, area is the measure of unit squares or how many unit squares we have, and volume is the measurement of unit cubes or how many unit cubes make up a 3D shape. Now that we've gone over a little bit of background on each of the dimensions and you understand what volume technically is, let's get into some practice problems together. I encourage you to grab some paper, something to write with, and let's do some math together. In this first example, let's take a look at this rectangular prism that has three dimensions of 4 meters, 2 meters, and 3 meters. And just to give you a little bit better of a visual understanding, I'm going to go ahead and draw the cubes in so you can see them a little bit more clearly. After all, the definition of volume is how many cubes make up this rectangular prism. Given that each of these unit cubes has a volume of one cubic meter, let's see how many fit into this rectangular prism. To find the volume of any prism, you multiply the area of the base by the height of the prism. Typically, capital V will represent the volume, capital B will represent the area of the base, and lowercase h will represent the height of the prism. Simply put, capital V is equal to capital B times lowercase h. Because we're dealing with a rectangular prism and the base is a rectangle and we can find the area by multiplying the length and width, we can substitute in length times width for capital B. Now, if the base was a different shape than a rectangle, like maybe a triangle or a trapezoid, we would need a different formula to find the area of that base. But since we're dealing with a rectangular prism, we could just use LW for the rectangle. Substituting in 4 meters, 2 meters, and 3 meters in for the variables, we can find that 4 times 2 gets us the area of the base, which is going to be 8 meters squared, and multiplying that by 3 meters, or the height, we get a volume of 24 cubic meters. Hopefully that makes sense because we have 8 cubes on the first layer, 8 cubes in the middle layer, and 8 cubes on the top layer. And altogether, that's 24 unit cubes. In the second example, let's take a look at a rectangular prism that has dimensions that are decimals. We have a length of 5.8 feet, a width of 12.5 feet, and a height of 2 feet. Let's start by writing our formula of volume is equal to the area of the base times the height, and since the base is a rectangle, we can say the volume is equal to length times width times height, and we know our length is going to be 5.8 feet, our width is going to be 12.5 feet, and our height is 2 feet. Multiplying 5.8 by 12.5, we find out that the area of the base is going to be 72.5 square feet, and then multiplying that by the height, or 2 feet, we get a final volume of 145 cubic feet. Basically, we can fit a total of 145 of these little 1 foot by 1 foot by 1 foot cubes into this rectangular prism. While some of the cubes have to be cut because of the decimal side lengths, if you put those pieces together, you'll end up with 145 entire cubes. Here's a third and final example, but with fractional side lengths. For this rectangular prism, the length is going to be 2 and a half feet, the width is going to be 1 and 1 fourth feet, and the height is going to be 2 and 2 thirds feet. Our formula is volume is equal to the area of the base times the height, 
the base is a rectangle, so we can say volume is equal to length times width times height. Substituting in our values in, we have two and a half feet times one and one fourth feet times two and two thirds feet. Converting each of the mixed numbers into improper fractions, we really have five halves times five fourths times eight thirds. Five halves times five fourths is equal to 25 eighths, and we're gonna multiply that by eight thirds. Cross canceling the eights together, we get a final volume of 25 thirds cubic feet, and turning this into a mixed number, we have eight and one third cubic feet. While we can fit eight whole one foot by one foot by one foot cubes into this rectangular prism, we can't quite fit a ninth one, but we can fit one third of a cube into this rectangular prism in addition to the eight whole ones that did fit. And there you have three different examples of how to find the volume of different rectangular prisms given whole number side lengths, decimal side lengths, and fractional side lengths. If you found this video helpful, I'd encourage you to give the video a thumbs up and let me know in the comment section below what your favorite part was. As always, keep up the great work, and I'll see you in the next one.